Okay, I'm sorry recording. Hopefully this works. Um, hello YouTube, uh, Samurai Geek here. Uh, I decided to just um, throw this video uh, together or just like start recording. It, just like throw it up there because uh, Low T Charlie on Twitter um, asked for people to who are non-binary to share their experience or what is their impression of the current discourse with contrapoints and that has been happening. And uh, I could have, like, just typed it all out in, like, a series of threads, but I decided to, like, just record myself uh, going through this and going through the thought process. It's going to be very rambly. I'm going to be sorry for that because I'm not good at making vlogs, honestly. Uh, I don't know how Gwendolf here does this, honestly. Hey, I have a 38-minute, like, vlog that's on my phone that I still haven't uploaded because I'm a bit embarrassed if I like how I rambled on and go off topic like I'm doing right now. So... And, okay, so instead of just, like, typing it out, going to do a video, trying to do the best I can to be concise about it. Um, if, I'm honestly not surprised with what, what ContraPoints has said. Because there's, a, there's been a history of ContraPoints saying these kind of things that does come off as a bit uh, dismissal of non-binary people. Um... Oh, oh, I have it open actually right now. So I'm just going to like, yeah, I'm going to do that. Transfer. So you now see me and it's a place catcher. It goes to this little thing. Because the, uh, before uh, Natalie went deactivated her account, uh, these were a series of tweets that she posted. Uh, there's an interesting generational divide amongst trans people. Trans people 10 years older than me have a very different experience than those trans 10 years younger than me. I'm not denying that. Oh, by the way, I have to be 35. Uh, but I came out as demi non binary. I came out as non binary like. Pretty much like last year, last October. Uh, traditional trans people were guided by social pressure and medical uh, instruction to blend in as much as possible to try to pass. And that's still by far the most reliable way to be accepted. Uh, yeah, clearly there's like more that could have been there than wasn't shown. Or maybe that's in like other screenshots, but like that's what I have right now. And to that point, it's like, yeah, but. That kind of sucks. That kind of sucks that, like, trans women are f forced into have to, like, appear as women and to pass in order to be accepted. Uh, that's w w kind of what we are trying to do is uh, to change society to be much more accepting of people for just who they are. But things are changing fast, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, trans people have a much more uh, cultural visibility now, and the younger generation wants the whole institution and gender to change to better uh, accommodate them. Yeah, why not? I mean, honestly, why not? Um, so let's go on to the next one. Oh, uh, oh, oh, thank you very much. Uh, like, uh, Ashley for like uh, taking these screenshots because uh, like yeah it's like it's, it's, not, it's just useful to have this sort of thing where it's just like whatever people talk about here you go um I'm friends with a lot of Gen Z trans people and I often group them eh, and I'm often group in with them because I'm very online and I'm transitioned not that long ago but my experience is very different I'm not a vanguard zoomer trans I sometimes feel like the last of the old and old last of the old school transsexuals uh i think people have a problem with uh, this word so i apologize if like this word uh offends you um i am reading verbatim i guess i've got to use their one and this is the biggest one i think i i guess it's good for people who who use they them only and only one gender neutral language but it comes at the minor expense of semi-passing trans like me and that's super fucking hard for us and and i'm gonna transition back to myself right now and yes i i can understand that she's is just venting and there is something to like well can't a person just like vent online well if they're doing it on Twitter with a large following and she already knows this that like she will get blowback for things 
because she has in the past. Um, don't be surprised if people call you out on that. And I'm, I'm aware of that too, even though I'm like a small a Twitter account. I don't know what at one point you become a big Twitter account when you have. I know that like if, if, if some people have mentioned if you're over two thousand followers, then you're a big Twitter account. And I'm a small Twitter account right now. I guess I lose less than a thousand, but close to like a thousand. Um, but it does sound you know, like from that tweet that she's annoyed that um that they them. Uh, only people uh, are, are kind of wanting to their pronouns be like known, and, and it's also like I wonder if it's in like other screenshots or tweets because I remember I did seeing tweets like this where Contra Contra wants to and loves to be able to just like sit down with a group of people and be considered a woman, no questions asked, just pass as a woman. And it does seem like that she gets annoyed um, if the topic of trans uh, comes up and has been acknowledged that she is trans. And oh, you're tr and then the was like, oh, you're trans. Uh, what are your pronouns? Apparently, uh, she's one of those people that get annoyed by that question of what are your pronouns. She wants it to be assume already and for people to assume correctly i guess uh, and she has expressed that in like some of her videos she even like whether jokingly or not and and maybe it's just a total joke and i shouldn't read too much into it but it's like there's possibly some truth into it that like wow she thinks a trans film a trans film finds me hot and and this all brings back to like the aesthetic which is the big one and basically and it's kind of like that i think well there's been many controversies in the past uh, uh her bet not great take on like punching nazis 2017 um of course brunch cake she uh, uh, 2017 the vidcon that was over two years ago and now that you think about it wow uh don't forget also at that same vidcon she wore a trigger shirt and people rightly called her out for that and i think she didn't acknowledge like how hurtful that was and apologize for that so it's like and yeah, I'm, I'm remembering the various controversies that Red, Reading Radical has like mentioned in her uh, the State of Red Two video. Their State of Red Two video. I think her uh, she her is a fine this one of her acceptable pronouns or one of the pronoun one of her pronouns as well. Um, it's but like with the Jesse Signal article, uh, and and how she handles um criticism as well sometimes it's some i guess sometimes it is like can be harassment i'm not denying that i'm not denying that there's probably been harassment against her so i and i don't blame anyone to like just deactivate from twitter just like walk away from like twitter if they feel like they're receiving a bunch of harassment i have received criticism that's been to to a certain level and a certain veracity for a prolonged period of time that it kind of did felt like in at least some way uh, harassment but and maybe yeah other non-binding people have like took these like a, a statements uh too far and i probably am to blame for that too in that and have been harsh to her or had presented with her ruthless criticism but Ever since this, ex but it's pretty much clear that like her opinions on, on non-binary people have not changed since the aesthetic, which is like the big watershed moment of like, wow, you really think of that? And from my experience with the aesthetic, it's it's quite interesting. I was still cis then, but as I was watching this, I know I had a lot of trans friends, many of which not all, but many of which were critical of Contra uh, for like the Justice Signal article. And, but the big one was agreeing to do a debate, another debate with Blair White, because there was a previous debate that she did 
before she was a trans woman when she was just genderqueer and she wasn't she just wasn't great at the beat and it was moderated by Sean Head too who she Sean has said that she is friends with Contra I bet they still are or if they still are uh, Contra doesn't mention it publicly or I don't remember if she does and so and, that's, and trans people have a problem with that just in general because shoe is a problem in general June, June's a problem in general it's like uh and it and but yeah you know, think about that uh, I honestly and I remember the whole thing with, with like the Blair White debate up in Vancouver uh, to be monitored by Thayer Marion Thayer Myron and who Hey, who I don't have that, that big a problem with, honestly, because I never watched Theron Meyer's old content of the sh- the shitty takes that she had then, and I, from what I've seen a little of her afterwards, after knowing Contra, she seemed to change for better and has apologized for non-binary people for not considering them valid and like repeating the lie that just only two genders. So I appreciate that, um, but. Uh, but that was the big thing, and sometimes the, like this, that story of the Blair White uh, debate with an, a Contra in Vancouver has been twisted, whereas like Contra is funding and supporting um, a far right uh, conservative college group with Nazis and, and or anti-Semitic ties. Um, that, that that was a bit of a stretch there. Yes, it's it was still kind of like oh contra really are you doing that but i think she got a lot more criticisms and some harassment from that one as opposed to this one i think this one was just i think this one is just like another in a long line of like her like making a video of the aesthetic people having their rufus criticisms for her on that like criticism from um Formerly Maria the Witch, uh, like, uh, come, uh, come, respect, uh, uh, hey, she, Maria, she changed her name now, uh, don't know what it is, she's not making a video on this thing, she said so on Twitter, um, who else says, like, re- reply to that, uh, said it's videos, Re- Reading Radical made a bad one, actually, and uh, Gwendolyn Fear also made a, like, a response video to that one, too, it was, um, and, and, replying to like other people's responses to this i told you i was rambling and uh, but i do i bring back the to the extent i said like again i i wasn't yeah, i was cis then when i watched it first but i felt uncomfortable watching it i just didn't agree with her takes on gender politics it was just it just felt wrong and also i knew that my trans a lot of my trans fans who already have their long history of issues uh, with contrapoints as i already mentioned and they would have been upset with the excedus video most of them were upset with the excedus video i have a train uh, there was a couple that actually loved the excedus video and because it felt like it felt true to their trans experience it felt true to them of the needing to pass as a woman to be accepted as a woman the needing to dress up the needing to put on makeup the needing to put on the aesthetic of being feminine to be accepted and but yes that's not that true for everyone now and another interesting thing also that okay and back to responses to um the status that there's one response i'm going to like transition back go back to here by fenya um they have like unlisted uh this vlog video but like after the aesthetics they made just a vlog video in response to the aesthetics video it was that video that i saw that vlog video where they just put on makeup as they were going through their uh, opinions of the discourse and what was mentioned in the aesthetics and what uh, the aesthetics of gender means and what if you're non-binary because what are the aesthetics of being non-binary we know the aesthetics of the masculine was pretty much only like the coded the only coded masculine aesthetics is facial hair that's it as if someone's with facial hair it's clearly a masculine coded aesthetics for 
other things, uh, clothing, it's like if there are uh, clothing aesthetics that are coded feminine, uh, there are a lot more feminine coded aesthetics of makeup, of clothing, like leggings, and skirts, and dresses that are more, that if more defined socially as that it's a feminine thing to wear, whereas like masculine clothes generally now are just more gender neutral as opposed to a masculine. Again, the facial is the only masculine thing. That video by Fenya, that vlog, sparked something in me. I, I, I started questioning my gender more significantly. I had questioned it before, but that one questioned my gender more significantly to the point that, like, for a week, I was like, and and part two, like, also to the aesthetics and like it, it, to give some credit, I guess, to that video, something that Contra has said or a part of her gender theory. Uh, I guess spoke some truth to me where I, I think I even left the comment or something or said something to this effect. It's like, I guess me being a cis man who wears leggings, being leggings man, is me doing a performance. I am performing gender of some kind my or of gender expression that is outside of cis men. It's on... And I identified as this man, but I accept my gender expressions more than just this man, because just for the leggings, honestly, uh, which I love. And I did sort of wear the leggings as like, come on, a cis man can wear leggings. Why not? But I actually love wearing the leggings and like, I honestly haven't switched back to always wearing slacks or pants. I wear shorts just for the pockets and well, also to be presentable at work because like there's no need for that. No need for the bulge. <sighs> but when like, eh. but when like, you know, like uh, kind of like put a lot of that out there of like what are gendered uh, aesthetics in society and how and the lack of n no non-binary aesthetics because uh, it's outside the binary and we are in a very binary um, society. I, yeah, I I started to significantly question my gender. Am I really cis? Do I feel comfortable being cis? Before, for the longest time, I was, and then I wasn't, and then it was like happened to be like a week, and happy to be October eleventh, and it was like, wait, actual coming out day. Saw so the hashtag on Twitter, and I did a little research. Like, can non-binary people also come out on this? Yes, non-binary people can come out on like National Coming Out Day. So then I decided, uh, 2018, October 11th, to come out as non-binary. Because being cis did not feel right, felt comfortable enough anymore. For a long time it did, but didn't anymore. And then I've been non-binary since. And I do consider myself trans, in that I have a trans identity. Uh... Because other people have like they said that the I am trans, and I don't mind people saying that. Uh, and also, it's kind of funny. It's like after I announced that, for the most part, it's like he, him, still my pronouns, but they, them is fine. So he, they are my pronouns. And some people like would mention me, like I'm in the live chat, then the stream, and the host would be like, mentioning, oh yes, I'm running gig. The they, they were. They struggle for a second because, like, I know they just came out as like non binary. I want to get this correct. It's like, they, it's like, and yeah, I told them, oh, yeah, yeah, th they is fine. It's, um, uh, but yeah, so I am non binary or realizing non binary, not because loosely because of contrapoints and because of the aesthetic. And so, with um, her history of dismissing of non-minor people or basically and this was a, again back to uh, reading radicals like a re response to the aesthetics i think she, the reading radical did put a clip with now they win contrapoints in a stream with roman millennials where 
uh, counterpoints kind of just said, and for the most part, that uh, I don't get these non-binary people. And just like with um, the aesthetics, it, it, it she hammers on, or the, the character just seen in that video hammers on the importance of passing. And that's how she knew always, and the Contra has always viewed uh, transits, is that it's important to pass. And there's a history of it. Even though it's like, it, it, not to like just dig up dirt onto someone, I'm going to go back to like uh, Twitter transfer back here, uh, back to this thread. And, and it's more to like covers like how um, I'm sure Natalie did not intend it for like to get like uh support or stands from like people like Eun's Miles Chung and whoever this person is as well um but it's like is is that really a good look for you to be like supported by I agree with Contra Eun Miles Chung and also like she's still friends with June too and I've seen Christina Hoff Summers as well and Jesse Single as well uh, mention about this but I'm sure kind of like for Ian as well and for Christina Hoff Summers and for Jesse Single I'm sure that they just are being opportunists about that so I'm not going to totally blame Contra on that uh, it would be nice if that uh, she will just come up and say screw you Ian Flong Chong don't defend me please um, but yeah, it's, yeah, and that's the thing. Contra kind of is aware of uh, non-binary people or their experiences because she did a whole video about being gender girl. However, in her mind, she just sees that as like, oh yeah, but that was a stepping stone from me being, um, formerly a cis man who wears dresses. The, is gender queer was just a, the bridge for being a cis man who wears dresses to being a trans woman. And so she's she still fails to like see how sometimes people can be gender queer. Kind of me actually. I'm still exploring my gender. So gender queer is one of those other like titles that I, I would use. I like den demi non-binary actually, where it's just like I'm a man. I'm a uh, I'm male. I'm male plus. I want more gender. I want to. I don't want to just all of the like, non-binary, but. Half a non-binary or fifty percent non-binary, it'd be good. I'm hundred. I have a hundred percent fifty percent gender. Hundred uh, percent of it's male and fifty percent is non-binary. So why not? But then again, back to this thread and add, uh, because last year, yeah, and Contra has kind of said this thing where it's just like hey, she's weirded out basically by meeting a full-on twenty-year-old boy mode kind of person that says hi i'm a trans woman she hears some pronouns she feels weird about that it is and then this oh, and i'm sure this is not the, the experience of many non-binaries and i leave it to them to like and uh, articulate what non-binary experience looks not what non-binary experience looks in the binary world i do not uh, I do not cannot speak to that. But surely an account that begins and ends with I'm not a man because I don't and then find as one is pretty weak. Yeah. Uh, again, not to just dig up something that she said in the past because it's one thing for there's someone to say uh, some problematic language in the past. Like, I, I used to say the R word, the ableist slur, and I regret doing that. There's many things, actually, I have said in, in, even, like, four years ago or something that I re that regret spouting or spewing that kind of rhetoric now because I'm now I'm a feminist. And, but is the reason to bring up that is in life with many other recent actions and many of of her actions of a constant thing she she views non-binary people as weird and she and so she would rather just be the lone trans person but be a trans person in the past and then be assumed as a woman which she is but being but assumed that she is a cis woman and for the transness not to come up because once transness comes up and people asking for or 
stating their pronouns, whether it's this or not, that's when she feels uncomfortable. In a way, she just feels uncomfortable being around they, them. In, in a way. Um, at least that's, that is how I read her tweets. And I know it's like personal venting that she's doing publicly. And it's, it's still... Um, and, but that's also why I recently decided to like tweet this out because I have thought about it before and thought about like discussing it amongst one, uh, my other trans friends and non my friends. But then I said, you know, fuck, I'll just like say this and tweet it out. If a cis person, be a cis woman or a cis man, says that their pronouns is they, them, their, I will use they, them, their pronouns. No questions asked. I don't see a problem with that. And many people have like responded positively and saying, "Yeah, of course not. Why not?" And and because and I mentioned this because uh, this really happened. I was at an event. Uh, there was a local activist uh, group. Then we're just doing barbecue, just a celebration or a thing. And someone was like mentioning and that oh, I'm, a, I'm a cis woman, but I know some like non-binary people. I haven't met some non-binary people. Um, in Seattle, there's a like Capitol Hill, which is a big queer community or a big. The borough that has like a strong queer um, community. I mean, and it's like I met some non-binary people, but I I wonder. I want this is a cis person that's saying this at this event. I was cis woman. I want to start using them them pronouns, but I don't want to be appropriating queer culture because I'm cis. Uh, but I wonder would they be fine with that? And I spoke up and saying like, hey, I'm actually non-binary. I don't see the problem with like you saying asking people to use they them as your pronoun hell a, a cis man can say she hers is her pronouns or a cis woman can say he him is his pronouns what's wrong with that oh yeah it's weird but that's because it's new uh, but and and other people to my original tweet have like said, oh yeah, that because that could be the step for them to dip their toe in the water and see if they like like being referred to as they them for pronouns, and then that could be a way for them to realize they're not cis, and even if they don't realize that they or, or even if they still realize that they're cis but prefer they them or they them as their pronouns. That's still fine too. And to caveat to that, and Justin uh, Mitchell has like brought this up uh, that this happened, or it's like, or did it happen to Lex? I don't I forgot which. Uh, I can go back to the original tweet, but I'll just like put it in the description below. Uh, sometimes there are some people who disingenuously use they them. And actually, I, I remember Renovus uh, on Twitter mentioned how she got harassed by like comic gators. And uh, one trick that the comic gators would use to like um, get uh, the Twitter account to be deactivated is that they'll harass uh, someone who's an uh, anti comic gator. And they will have they them in their profile. And once someone who's been exasperated and upset with these comic gators again these trolls it's just harassers uh and they say he him or something or she her whatever they assume pronouns which is what we do uh they get that uh they will report that tweet and mass report that tweet because they have they them their profile and so that is one aspect of people of cis people using they them disingenuously. But I have to, and so be fair warned about that, and that is a possibility that's out there. But and even with like say attack hog you know, helicopter, which we all know is a meme right now, but if someone sincerely says that I'm an attack helicopter, and I will and, and I will use whatever pronouns they say they won't be used, even as it it, or fey fey, or zerzex, and if it's like a if even it's a pronoun I never heard before, I will respect their pronouns. If it's a new gender I never heard before, I'll respect their gender. I'm, I'm willing to learn new things. What's wrong with that? <clears throat> but it does. But for Contra, it still feel she she still feels one way, and that does kind of upset 
it's a non-binary people and i have my problems with it too uh even even though what she like has described i think can be like form dysphoria where it's like she's aware of her transness being in like a circle of people who are who bring up trans issues publicly by mentioning their pronouns and and I guess she does feel gender dysphoria or some kind of dysphoria if there's a non-binary person there and then it becomes transness becomes a focus of the topic and she gets uncomfortable by that she wants to just like be invisible just pass just be I'm a woman who cares I'm a woman what I always been a woman it's like the bio girl kind of thing whereas like I've, uh, where it's like, if someone says to me, I am a woman, it doesn't matter how they present, I will say, okay, you're a woman. And she hears my pronouns, okay, you are a woman. Hmm. I will use she, her. And same thing for like, whatever, what is a man, whoever says, I am a man. And what does it mean for uh, being a man? Whatever that man says. Same thing for or being a woman. Same thing for being non-binary and that's how I stand and I'll think I'll end the video there so yeah thank you for listening I, I think I covered everything I want to say you want to like say uh, yeah I, th I became non-binary because of Contra or because of like Contra Sustative video or because of response to Contra Sustative video and so that's so that's why I, I do feel a personal tie to Natalie Wynn Contra points and her discomfort around them bees. They them people. Or they thems, as she put it. And and yeah, it's like it, but and there's I could have gone into like a, the whole history of how like she just oh yeah that's another thing is like I have stopped watching ContraPoints video. The last video I saw was the gender critical video, so I haven't seen like the transgenders and like oh yeah, and I'm an anarchist too, so I'm a far leftist, and I've have and I'm often annoyed with her with her liberalism in videos, and I've heard I haven't seen the video, but I heard that she like said that like far leftists are slightly better than fascists and like you if 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 that is true i'm just going to give better than a doubt that like it's possible that's not true i've seen the video myself but if that is true a big major youtuber horseshoe theories me again or horseshoe theories and people like me which is something i'll just have to get used to i'm just going to have to get used to that you do that by liberals i'll be horseshoe theory uh, how's that in the video? I don't know. I'll just end it there. Yeah, it's just a vlog. Um, OT Charlie, hopefully uh, you like this and this is what you want. Just use whatever you want of it, little of it, some of it, all of it, a lot of it. Uh, just link my channel below. And I'll link, I'll link your channel below as well as the, like, the Twitter itself. Um... And just uh, ended like an normal video. Click and like if you like this. Uh, ring the notification bell. And subscribe. No, subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell so you won't miss any kind of like videos like this, even the rambling one like this. Uh, um, I have a Patreon now, so give to that if you want to. Oh, not gonna th thank you to my new first ever uh, Patreon, my five dollar Patreon. Oh fuck! I'm recording this anyway, so I can like delete this afterwards. Um, everything and stuff. Uh, my first ever five dollar Patreon. Who are you? Come on! How do I find that out? What? No, that's. Ooh, I gotta like go back to my. No, that. There we go. What's what? Okay, there we go. So, 
All right, so my thank you for my very first ever five dollar Patreon, Echo Anarchist Squirrel. Thank you, Echo Anarchist Squirrel. And my patrons down below, check it out if you like and consider like giving me money. I also have a PayPal and a Kofi for like one time donation. Um, but but my first uh, links below on the description of all my videos is the charity links to my friends and comrades who need money because this is a terrible system of capitalism of and of liberal capitalism and liberalism where you need to pay in order to live and that it just puts a terrible strain on those who just can't work or lost their job or have difficulty finding work and so they are have to resort to big online in order to live we got to end that now we got to end that yesterday we got to move away from this idea of you need to pay in order to live so please give money to like hey, my friends to come down below uh my particular joanna she always needs money she begs online in order to live uh phoenix of the channel pizza ryan's 87 could you really use some money too to help her out um Check and Foxy Jezebel has a GoFundMe. Uh, Lindsay, Lisa, Jamie, hope I pronounced that correctly. They could potentially become homeless by October 1st, so her GoFundMe campaign is there. At least share it around your social media, please, uh, so that more eyes can like see it. And so, yeah, um, I think that's it. Time to end the video. Stay awesome, my friends.